Hey guys, it's Dukon Red One, and welcome to episode 11 of Duconia's Rising. Today, we are going to be focusing on a server tour. I will be showing as much as I can remember that is going on on this server, and I do think that this is going to wow everyone. Um, this is going to be a really awesome episode because there is a lot going on around this server, and there is for sure a lot of progress. Now, Queensdale is slowing down a little bit. As we've been getting through the Christmas holidays. This has uh, just people have been busy, and especially with us trying to, you know, getting a little bit more inspired with our personal projects. But of course, Queensdale is still making progress, and we will be going back full force on this at some point. But um, I'm sure you all can understand inspiration and whatnot. But in any case, there is a lot going on in the server besides Queensdale, as you guys can imagine. This server is not only Duconians, we also have the Umbridge, the Ragnarsons. The, the, F, the Thick Alliance and things of that nature, the Embers and uh, such things like that. So there's a lot of people going, um, you know, building on the server. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start off with Queensdale as this is pretty much the central hub of activity on the server at this point. Um, and there are a few updates to uh, go through. First of all, we now have a grand uh, gatehouse that leads into a bridge um, going over the Great River that borders along Queensdale and eventually will lead out into a sea uh, way up, uh, well, that way, west. But um, as you can see, it's very, very well done. It's made by Fireskin. Uh, he made this gate not too long ago, actually. Just a very recent addition here. And if we come outside, we'll get a better idea of what's going on on this side. But uh, you got lots of fortifications and things going on. And in order to access or get into the actual city of Queensdale, you'll have to get through this first. Um, really, really cool design. Love it to bits. You got a nice big wood gate here and a portcullis that's not functional at this point, uh, but still. Hopefully at some point we will see some functionality there, uh, but it all depends on if we have room in order to add that in or not. Uh, the interior is something that um, we're not sure if we're going to actually see yet or uh, not. Well, we'll see. Fairskin is actually in there right now adding in some stuff, so pretty cool. Love it to bits. And uh, But anyways, really cool work. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Fairskin is doing an incredible job putting that together. Um, here we have a trade ship built by Chiller Cookie and uh, Caligath. Um, again, Chiller Cookie is a really good addition to the Duconians. He is still on trial, but I don't understand why. Actually, I think he got moved into official. But still, um, he's actually been working really hard on, uh, first of all, the city planning and everything around Queensdale. He's been doing a lot of work on that. But uh, this trade ship looks absolutely splintastic. I love the black and then the colorful sails and the colorful little bit of gold there. Really, really nice. Very colorful. Very, very grand. And um, the reason why it has such low sails is so that it can look like it can fit underneath that bridge there. But still... Uh, really cool there. Now, this is a really neat addition. Again, another build by Fairskin. Um, Fairskin seems to be the MVP of the server right now, or <laughs> of the Deconians. He's been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, for example, the Moon Gate now has a drawbridge. He did that as well. Really neat design there. Love it. It has a uh, sort of a, uh, a levee system for the drawbridge. And then his winery now has a shop here in the middle of the town. So, Really, really uh, well done design here. He's been utilizing a lot of the new textures that we have in the most recent update. And somebody has to sleep. Yeah, alrighty. Well, there we go. Um, but as you can see, it's just an absolutely incredible design here. Really detailed, beautifully, beautifully designed. And uh, this really um, is quite awesome to look at. And I hope will inspire some of you even to utilize these new textures somehow in a really unique and interesting way. But this is just so well done, even with the uh, the the shields here on the front. Just just something like that makes a really truly a uh, unique design that just really stands out. Um, even with this little bit of terracotta there as a, uh, a welcoming carpet into the house. Um, really cool. Love it. Love it. Love it. So this right here is a new gate built by Caligath and Mesophila. 
Um, currently named the Calafila Gate, but um, maybe at some point we'll be seeing a rename of this. But for right now, the Calafila Gate um, it has two uh, little things here. It has a little personnel gate and, of course, a larger gate in the middle. This is less about defense and more about um, aesthetic aesthetic. Uh, purposes just to make it look kind of nice as we enter into the bailey of the castle now as we enter into here there's going to be quite a grand and rich uh district in this area uh there is some naming for this district uh there we have a really nice uh, district planning picture that uh, showcases kind of the plan of what queensdale will eventually look like so i'm sure you guys will be enjoying that but um lots of progress going on here and lots of uh things planned uh but of course like i said slowing down through the uh, christmas season but i'm sure as we move forward there will be a little bit more progress this here is the spa slash bathhouse i don't think there's been anything done down in there yet but uh this is going to be a pretty grand little thing there and then it goes underneath the the mountain of the castle and uh so that'll be pretty interesting uh, lots of little things going on. You got a gate going on up there and whatever else. But yeah, so just be looking forward to that. Queensdale will be making some advancements as we move forward. Now, of course, we go up here to the actual Queensguard itself. And we will be seeing the uh, updates on this. Now, if you guys had watched the live stream that I had uh, built or uh, me and Thomas had been building this and been texturing and added in a few things... I think you guys will uh, enjoy that, so the stream uh, link will be in the description below. But still, as you can see, we've gone for a very contrasty palette um, for the curtain walls and for the lower side walls. We've been going for uh, the brown and orange concrete, a little bit of cobble mixed on the outside, and of course the... Uh, the crenellations there with the arrow slits I think is a pretty nice design and then you have probably will have a little bit of a um, of a berm back here so you can actually step up top here and shoot downwards so this here is going to be just a little wooden gate possibly nothing super fancy this is just a uh, barbican style gate here and then you go left and into a portcullis and maybe even a wooden gate in there as well you got a horseshoe tower and then a small building there let's get a quick look on the outside and see what this looks like so on the outside you can see there's definitely a lot of progress we've been just adding in a little bit of skin uh along the uh, outside of the castle just to give us a good idea of what it should look like now there is still things that i'm not too sure about for example the towers here with the red roofs not too big on it i feel like we should possibly go for even flat top towers following the same style as these crenellations and then put flags on top of those i feel like that might be the best route to go because i feel like um with that right there it kind of um it removes the style it, it clashes in my opinion so i feel like that at some point now i did add that myself but i'm just saying that i might change that because it just feels a little bit out of place um hopefully we can change it to something that uh suits it even better or uh yeah so eventually we'll see around about doing that another thing a little update over here is the red gate now has a drawbridge as well there is not functionality to this drawbridge unfortunately but still uh, it is nice to have a drawbridge here because it does add functionality to the moat so that is pretty much the gist of Queensdale. There may be a few updates around the south quadrant uh, where Fairskin's farm is. So we can go ahead and do a quick little run over there and see if there's any updates. So Fairskin has been a very uh, active member in um, building of Queensdale and adding to and such things of that nature. But I just want you guys to just enjoy and fully see the uh, progress that he's been doing here in uh, his manner as well. He's been adding a lot of atmosphere. And of course, you see this new little gazebo up here. Really neat design. I honestly haven't even gone up there myself to see what it, there uh, what there is. But, uh, oh yeah, just a nice little gazebo. It looks like possibly a shrine, something that you could worship um, whatever the uh, deity of the Duconians is. Who even knows? Um, but still, as you can see, the winery, uh, I'm sorry, the vineyards have expanded as well. There's lots of new uh, vines here on the back as well. Um, honestly, I'm actually quite interested in seeing if Fairskin has actually done interior for his house yet. Um, looking in from the windows, it looks like there is not interior yet, 
but let's do a quick just just to see let's just see if there's any interior is there there is not not yet but uh, I'm sure at some point fair skin will do that but um, that's not something that interests him as much uh, doing the interiors of builds he prefers to do the atmosphere and of course all builders have uh, strong points and points that just don't interest them as well and so I can completely understand there's definitely things that I um, do not like to do personally uh, when building as well and so I can definitely see why um, he wouldn't enjoy the whole uh, interior thing but still um, really incredible manner there honestly best I, I just that's just really inspires me when I look at it from this view. Um, absolutely incredible. Check that out, guys. Great architecture. Great, great, great work. So anyways, um, let's move on a little bit here. So Flair has actually added, I think this was Flair, added a stable down here along the pathway leading up to his manor, um, cresting above his uh, wheat fields here. Lots of neat little trees and things, so um, I actually haven't seen Flair in a while, but uh, hopefully we'll see him back at some point. Uh, really, really love his atmosphere, his uh, his uh, sense for details and everything. An incredible guy. Really, uh, really miss him. But uh, yeah, so uh, I'm sure just the Duconians are taking small little break here and there. So, uh, let's move on. So, this here is a little watchtower built by Soulfire. Um, we'll, he actually has a castle now, which is to the far west of Queensdale. We will be seeing that later in the episode, but um, we won't be going inside everything. I just want to give you guys a quick little look around um, all the buildings and things. But uh, if we go into the interior of everything, it's going to end up being an incredibly long episode, which this already is going to be. I mean, if we're going to be showing everything on the server... It's going to be a long episode. So now heading into Pine Sage, aka Pinecone Gardens. Um, this here is, again, Saltfire's Manor. Um, he built this actually being prior Duconian. And then uh, this is what was technically his application to join the Duconians. And so then he became trial, and now he is official. But I uh, really love this to bits. It is a very, very mazy feeling manner, and uh, I think it just is incredible. And it's a great buffer between um, our uh, lands and the embers, which are next <laughs> in line. But uh, what's funny about this is, you, like, you go straight from this green, lush land, and then all of a sudden, bam, desert, and bam, there's a desert city right across the way. So if you go across this, um, uh, what do you call this, humped bridge here, it leads us into the lands of the Ember called Kursala. Or, uh, anyways, the name will be in the screen there. But um, this was uh, built by, I'm sorry, lorded over by King of Light, who started the server. And now it is uh, led by Derpy Steve and some other Embers as well. But as you can see, they're really doing a great job. They're adding in details and all kinds of neat things. I just think it's really incredible to see the progress on the server. I mean, everything is just coming along so nicely, and it's just great. Um, you would think a survival server, you know, people would go a lot slower than what we have been, but uh, it's just been incredible to see how fast things have been developing. Now, of course, the pyramid on the inside is not what you would typically expect for a realistic pyramid or whatever, but still, it's just really neat to see what there is. You got a nice little garden down here, and just... It's more of a temple type thing. Um, and if we go in here, we got a nice little aquarium, of course, for some fish and whatnot, and a storage room. So it's definitely a lot more survival themed. It's not exactly uh, built to be realistic type deal, but really cool nonetheless. Absolutely amazing. Um, got a couple giant monkeys, <laughs> I'm sorry, lions here on the front. Maybe sphinxes. Sphinxes. <laughs> that sounds funny. Um, Anyways, yeah, it's got some pools here on both sides. Just really cool design here in the uh, in Kursala. Now, there is more planned across the river here, or the creek. Um, there is like a grand temple plan for there and some stuff there as well. But uh, that is still yet to be seen as there's a lot of things to go uh, to, you know, to happen, of course. But um, I love, again, the mazy feel of this build. There is just so much potential for design and details as you walk through these very crowded and hopefully eventually busy streets full of details but um yeah so that is looking really nice and we got this like what is this like uh what uh what would you call that thing it's called an anubis not an anubis it's like those half dog half man body things i forget what they're called but uh 
I think that's what that's supposed to be. Anyways, really cool with that. And now this here is the server spawn that we're coming up on. And uh, Derpy Steve has made it into a really neat uh, way to uh, possibly make it easy for uh, new people to join factions. Now, we are possibly looking into adding in some more people to the server. We've been developing a system. Um, so if you have an interest in joining us, um, now for people that know me or maybe someone on the server very directly, uh, it's going to be much easier for you to join the server. But if you are um, just a, a follower that maybe I've never talked to before, maybe you've just seen once or twice before, on a stream or something of that nature, it's going to be a harder process for you to join. But if I trust you or if somebody on the server fully trusts you, it'll be a far easier process. Now, this does not mean that we're going to open up the server to everybody. Um, we will have possibly a limited number of positions that could possibly be filled per month. Um, we're still figuring out this system, so I'm just telling you guys there is hope still to join. But we don't want to close ourselves off, and we do want to continue growing. So just keep that in mind. But anyways, we got some great stuff going on here. We got um, Pheasant King's little uh, Muta going on up here to the north of Queensdale. This here is uh, David's castle there, um, who is no longer with us. Uh, Pumbass, a uh, really, really awesome castle, which we will be seeing here very soon. We have Ragville here. Uh, so that's actually our next showcase build there. Um, we got the Duconian Outpost, um, which is built by Fingolfin, who will, I am very sure, soon to be a Duconian. Um, Fingolfin's house there. Now we have Timotheus, which we'll be seeing again very soon, very close to here. Saltfire's castle up there, and also Butterman's castle, very close to each other, and very close to another place. Um, we got the Thick Castle, aka Mori's Build, and also Arcanus. We have Vaughn's Mountain, Pendragon's uh, castle and area, which is a very outdated map. Boyt Muse Place, which you guys have seen last episode. Flareal's Manor, which is also Duconian. Um, then we have Saltfire, again Duconian. You guys have already seen his Pinecone Place. Now we have Sir Galahoot, which is... Um, honestly, I haven't been there in a while. I haven't seen him on in quite a time. Um, just Vader's Place. Of course, Queensdale. Can't forget that. Very outdated. Well, not very outdated, but still a little bit outdated. And then we have Tarago's place right there, which we'll be seeing again soon. We're very close to that. And then the embers. So very, very neat. Love it to bits. Lots of progress going on. So here is the remains of David's castle. Um, we had some problems uh, going on. So if a server men member um, proves themselves to be untrustful, there is a uh, consequence of course and so the build has been transformed into a ruin um so anyways that's what this is now a ruin but uh still really nice really well done i love the <laughs> i love the ruins it really adds a really unique uh feel to the server environment as you explore um, because if it's just a server full of like fresh builds um you know a few ruins is just a really cool addition um well, even Tarago is building some ruins over here, so really cool with that. But let's go see another build really quick. Um, don't want to blabber about as we're traveling between. So you guys can see in the distance there, there's a lot of terraforming going on. And this is Tarago's, well, one of uh, Tarago's builds. He's actually building a massive tree, which we'll probably be seeing here soon. But uh, he is terraforming a mountain range here in a Skyrim-themed tomb. Um, we got a giant dragon skeleton here in the valley and just really well done uh, terraforming and terrain. But uh, as you can see, we got the wing up here and got the head down there. Very uh, bright, I know, but still really well done. Um, especially if you're down in here, you just feel immersed in this world that Tarago is creating. We're not going to explore on the inside of everything. Of course, it's not done. But um, it's just really cool to see this coming together. Uh, I love this part over here, if we make our way through. Like, just these trees, these custom trees are so nice. I love them to bits. Um, but there is something really nice over this way, built by Timotheus, who is actually um, a fellow YouTuber. So if you guys want to check out the progress of his build... Go check him out on YouTube, which will be, again, linked in the description below. 
Uh, Timotheus is a very, very nice older gentleman that uh, you guys will absolutely love his content. So go check him out, and uh, hopefully he'll be doing some building episodes as well. But uh, he is building a cruciform, um, crucifix-style uh, Norman keep styled after Trim Castle. Now, if you guys know what that is, it's in uh, uh, Ireland, I think. Uh, but he is building, it's themed after that. I am actually starving right now, so I got to feed myself so I can actually do some parkouring. But uh, anyways, it's a really neat little build here. Very, <laughs> not little, but a really neat build here. Uh, you come in through here and you just, wow, this is all new. Um, you get into a couple kill boxes here and he's using a lot of black concrete for the walls and whatnot. And can we open this door? Look at that, we can. Um, but on the inside here, you got these massive walls, very heavily defended area. Uh, got a giant uh, bailey down here that I'm sure he'll utilize for something, maybe some kind of living resonances or whatnot. And then of course, a massive barbican right here, a massive gatehouse more or less. Now the interesting thing about this is it's a two-way gatehouse. You got one here and one there, and then it leads up the causeway into the castle. Now I'm just going to do a quick little flyby. We're not going to actually go inside this thing. So here we go. We got a nice little sky view of his castle. He has those neat little, uh, not houses, but hoardings, I guess, built up on the top of the castle there on each of the uh, four corner towers. But as you can see what I mean by the crucifix form, um, it has uh, eight sides, technically. You got, or like, I, I forget what it's the technical um, definition for cruciform is, but it has the unique shape there. Typically, Norman keeps just have the four towers and not the uh, the four uh, little pieces there coming out, but still, really neat design. Love it to bits. So, now we're going to make our way this way and up to Pumbass's castle. So, here we are, headed up the road, and bam! Look at this build, guys. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Pumbass has been very hard at work in creating this desert style castle here. What do we got here? <laughs> who is this? Anyways, I can't tell who that is, but it's just absolutely insane to see the level of detail that he has been going into creating this. You come in through this beautifully done barbican and it leads you to the gatehouse. Everything has a mechanism. Everything is designed and colorful. The balance is just so well thought out and I am just absolutely stunned by the level of quality that Pumbass is going uh, in order to create this beautiful build right here. But uh, you got plenty of towers, you got beautiful, beautifully made um, like houses and everything. This is almost a palace, more or less, but it's just an incredibly well done uh, build. And it's just interesting, um, like it's hard to see how his method is of creating this. Because typically when I'm building something, I create it from like... Uh, a step process like you know I build the keep or whatever and I but it seems like what he's doing is he's just like adding as he goes like it's just little by little it's hard to get um, and I one well, there is an idea but it's hard to uh, understand like his building method because it just seems so modular at this point which is actually a really cool method of building but uh, anyways really cool job by Pumbass he is doing an incredible job he's part of the thick alliance by the way um, really really well done so super exciting to see his build coming along as it develops and becomes uh, something just truly inspiring Okay, so we're going to head north now. Well, northwest technically, uh, which is going to lead us to Ragville. So here we are, coming up on the lands of Ragville, aka Ragnarsson, who has been creating an absolutely incredible place, if surrounded by fields and houses, a very atmospheric uh, place, especially when we start getting inside here. You'll start to see the design and the uh, the purposes that he's uh, doing here, but um, there's a lot of planning going on. The, really, the purpose of this uh, episode, or of these update episodes, is so that you guys can see the progress in future uh, server tour videos, so you can see um, how far builds have come. 
Uh, but yeah, Ragville is really coming along. Lots of things going on. It looks like he tore down a few houses, actually. But um, anyways, it's just really cool to see uh, the progress. Even uh, his castle up here. I'm sure you guys have seen this in uh, previous episodes. But um, yeah, his castle is just absolutely incredible. Very realistic design. Really, really beautiful as well. Just uh, As you can see, that's David's castle right down there. And of course, the Embers uh, City is just down the way. But, um, uh, yeah, you can definitely tell the design of this is truly a magnificent design. And the texturing as well, love that to bits, and very realistic in general. Um, it's uh, built off of being, a, I guess, a Mott and Bailey. Um, it looks like we got some vineyard type things going on down there as well. So that is awesome. Uh, it leads us up into a sort of an audience chamber type thing for the front here. And I'm sure there will be a lot more interior and things going on around here at some point. But um, Rag, who is now the head uh, community admin over on the Darwin Reforged server, doesn't have as much time anymore to uh, dedicate. Um, I'm sure it's just inspiration too. But as we all know, inspiration comes and goes. So eventually he's going to have some major inspiration again. For example, all of Ragville like, was literally in the matter of like three weeks. And his castle literally was uh, to this point in like a matter of a, a week or less than that. So Rag is one of those kind of types of people that can just build and build and build. And then bam, he is done. It's just <laughs> incredible. Now these here, I would imagine are some type of like roads and fields being planned here around the castle um, of course adding atmosphere and things now again what the uh, deal is about newcomers is we don't want newcomers to just come on and start building on themselves for themselves um, it's important that newcomers come on and join a faction so we'll figure out some sort of method to uh, make it so that applications are organized and so that you guys can make a proper choice either that or we'll place you into a uh a faction but uh all in good time guys hopefully you guys are as excited as we are and um, getting some newcomers some fresh blood here on the server so now we're going to head uh, this away i think it's about northwest and we're going to head to mori and arcane's castle they again are part of the thick alliance and uh so that's really awesome great great stuff um this here is by Secleton. This is uh, progress of a sort of a medical institute that he has been building. Um, so that is really awesome. He's making it in like a lush island in the middle of the desert. So really, really cool design there. Uh, we'll actually do a quick little look at this. Uh, again, progress is just like a super awesome thing to see how things develop over time. But uh, yeah, I just love it to bits. I love the design. It's very unique. Not something I would typically imagine seeing. Um, but it is just so awesome to see um, you know, stuff like this developing all over the server. Unique designs, unique things in general. And it just makes a super awesome in, uh, experience as we are exploring through. But uh, with that being said, check this out guys. I honestly haven't even seen this castle for a little while. So I'm actually going to start from the front which I think is about over here. And then we're gonna walk all the way through and just kind of enjoy the whole experience as we explore through um, this castle that Mori and Arcane have been developing. So I don't think that this is actually, this is supposed to be the palace. I think the causeway starts down here. Yeah, here we go, this is the causeway. Now we're not gonna follow that all the way down, but that goes all the way down to the ground. And um, the causeway I think will lead up this way. And I think we'll go, I guess it goes around that way. I don't know, we're just gonna go ahead and follow this where it needs, where we're, <laughs> where it leads us. But uh, I guess the causeway will kind of wrap around that way there. And then this all is supposed to be sort of like, uh, I guess like, a town type thing down here where people would live maybe like the blacksmith um, purposeful things so that uh, there is functionality in this castle I guess that this is the causeway here um, I'm really kind of confused where we're supposed to go all right so I think that this actually is the causeway up to the fortress because um, you got the palace down there and then this is going to be the fortress up here now I want you guys to take note at how mazy this causeway is leading up to the grand fortress of the uh, thick alliance gatehouse barricade door um, but anyways you come in through a little uh, the gate there and then you have another gate here very defensive designs and everything and then you come up through this and another gatehouse what is this dropper 
Dropper Gate, aka a portcullis. <laughs> but still really interesting, very cool, very, very uh, defensible, I will say. Now this terrain like really does the deed here in uh, um, you know, boldening the design. Um, so we got the gatehouse here again. We come up some more and this uh, causeway just keeps coming up. Got a little curtain wall, parapet balcony, aka curtain wall. <laughs> and then we uh, lead up this way. Now it's starting to get really crowded. I can hardly imagine a cart getting up here. Gatehouse, again, another portcullis. Man, this would just be uh, good luck getting through here. So I guess this is the continuation here. Again, another gate. It leads us up some stairs. And again, um, well, not again, but as you can see, it's all cobble. Um, the idea is, is that eventually it will be textured, um, which means that they're going to need some slaves to come on and... <laughs> <laughs> gather some resources and texture for them but still uh if anyone's interested in doing that let us know but still um let's see you keep going through here you got some pups here i guess this will be the fireplace there um got some great big chandeliers in the great hall there lots of resources and then we lead over a small bridge uh leave this for now arc i still got okay uh and this leads to the i guess the donjon um, of course, you got a massive donjon there as well, but you know, two donjons, yeah, it's not unheard of, I guess. Uh, like, maybe that's the old donjon, and this is the new donjon, but this one will, uh, looks like will be a much smaller uh, design here, but still, really, really well done. I love this castle to bits. It's going to be an absolutely incredible architectural achievement once it is finished, for sure, uh, and it is a true monument as well. Uh, has a great view, by the way. I mean, check this out. Look how high up we are. Um, do I have anything I can get up there with? I guess I'm just going to take that block. There we go. All right, but anyways, you can just see the incredible view. Um, if I had... Um, had explored that area and I had a longer view distance on. You can definitely see Queensdale from here. And uh, like if you look that way, you'll see Queens Guard and Queensdale and everything. So it's just an incredible view from up here. But now with that said, let's go north and go check out Muta. Okay, so here we are coming up on Muta, which is in the far north of the lands that uh, has been settled. Well, except for the farthest north that has been settled so far is actually uh, my land, the... Um, uh, Queensguard, not Queensguard, goodness, Fairchester, way north, but uh, this is the farthest north of the occupied lands here in the south, if that makes any sense, but as you can see, Pheasant King has been very hard at work in creating this really neat uh, little, um, what do you call it, Inuit tribe uh, called Muta. But it's really cool to see the progress in here. Each book costs one diamond. I guess that's her, her shop in there. But she's going for a sort of igloo type thing. And then I think this is supposed to be her frozen armor there. Really interesting um, use of uh, design there. Just make it look like it's some sort of like a totem or religious artifact. Um, I think that's her longhouse up there. So let's go check that out. If I can figure out how to get up there, that is. Uh, this is always fun. I guess I get I bet there is a re an actual way to get up here. Um, oh wow! Okay, so we got a lot of dogs in there. <laughs> but uh, yes, this is her long house, so that's really interesting. Great, great, great. Um, Pheasant King has been a very active member of the server. Been getting a lot done, so really cool to see her place developing. Okay, guys. So here I teased this in the last episode, but this is Mount Vaughn. Von Tool is building a Dwarven Mountain. Um, if you guys can imagine building a mountain in survival, I uh, I just I can't imagine the pain that he is going through uh, building this right now. Um, I am absolutely amazed by the progress and quality that this is actually becoming. I mean, this is just really turning out really nice. Um, but as you can see, he's going for a very Dwarven feel. You got a big lonely mountain in the middle of the area here let's actually start from down low and walk up this uh sort of like canyon path that will eventually lead into the grand chamber the central chamber where there's going to be a massive forge now if you guys are uh familiar with world of warcraft there is a mountain that he is building this from this is uh where he's getting the design influence from um, I forget what it's called, but it'll be in, in the video now. Uh, so that is what he's building at right now as I'm walking through it. I have no clue what it is. But uh, yeah, it's a giant forge that, uh, my gosh, what a great mob, uh, mob um, what do you call it, farm here. But still, a uh, really great um, project he has going on here. And it's like when he, when he started saying, like, I'm going to build a mountain, I was like, all right. 
are you really gonna build a mountain? But he's really building a mountain. So an absolute incredible job here for sure. I am absolutely uh, enthralled by the dedication he has to this project. So super excited to see some more progress. Man, look at that down there. <laughs> That's crazy. Alright guys, so next on the list is Butterman's Castle and Saltfire's Castle. So first we're going to show off Butterman. Um, he's actually the one that uh, we we didn't necessarily kick off the Queen's Guard Hill, but uh, he was on the Queen's Guard Hill at one point. Uh, he had a castle up there, but we asked him to move. He was very generous in uh, allowing us to take the hill, and we gave him a very nice gift for his... Um, what do you call it? Uh, acceptance and uh, being very nice to us. So we really appreciate him for doing that. But uh, this is his second castle here. Really neat job. Got great fortifications and things. The design is uh, built uh, to be something of a two-tier design. You got the sort of front barbican slash gatehouse and it leads over this sort of really deep pit there and then into the main keep. So really cool design. Love it to bits. But uh, man, guys, check that out over there. Alrighty guys, well check this out. I love the look of this castle. You got so much wood hoardings, the gray roof, and the uh, the palette in general just really works for this. Let me try if I can see if I can get in here. But anyways, um, you come in through a double gate, and I'm sure there will probably be a portcullis in here, maybe right there, and then another, du another double gate right there. Um, now, there was some issues beforehand where they didn't have these corner slabs there, but it looks like he finally fixed those. Um, I felt so bad with a texture update because he lost all of those uh, textures, so it was really annoying for him. Um, but still, really cool design there. Um, love this place to bits. I can't wait to see some more progress on it. But if we come inside here, you got sort of like a grand little hall here. And uh, come back in this area, got a nice little chapel of sorts. And let me try to find this place that he had shown me before. It was like a way to get down underground where there was a giant statue. I think it's right here, actually. Let's go down here really quick. Uh, no, it's not. All right, give me one second, guys. Okay, guys, so I finally found it. It took me forever to find. But anyways, you come down through here, and it leads us into this crypt-type area where you got little effigies of uh, previous kings. And then you come down into here, and you got, the, of course, this massive statue of Netherbrick um, of some sort of king on a throne. So anyways, this is right underneath that room we were just under. And I uh, really like this design. as It's just a really interesting uh, feature for sure. But uh, looking forward to seeing him develop this more. And of course, he's going to probably add in some more pallets in here and uh, so super excited to see some more progress but for sure Saltfire is making an incredible castle here all right guys well just north of Saltfire's castle is a absolutely incredible world that is being created by Pendraken, Dustfinger and Venelope who are a uh, great trio. Dustfinger was the most recent, but uh, he decided he wanted to join. He was actually uh, one of, he is actually our most recent addition to the server. But as we come up here, you will slowly start to take in the, uh, what is going on here. They're making a Mott and Bailey style castle, but with a stone keep. And of course, with the God Ray there, it's hard to see. But uh, as we come up here, we got a nice little town down below, a great big hill that this is built on. Um, like this right here, check out this view. Oh, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, he has great big fields of wheat built all the way around, and like I said, a giant castle there. Now, if we go down to the town, there's a lot of stuff down there as well, but, I mean, just check this out, guys. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Um, and if you guys uh, want to see more, let me know in future episodes, and, well, there's not much interior done in there yet, so maybe what I'll do is spotlight um, show-throughs at some point and just show through everything in one build, but... Um, Anyways, yeah, it's just really cool to see uh, how this has been developing. And again, progress is like a super awesome thing to see on these types of videos. But um, yeah, uh, he was kind of worried for me showing this because it's not finished yet. But no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah, we want to see it for progress. We want to see it to see how it uh, develops in the future uh, server tours. But yeah, it's just super awesome. We got little uh, border gates there um, way at the end. All these nice little houses and nice little manor here of some sort. Not sure what this manor is for. Uh, maybe for horses. I'm not sure. But still, a really cool design. I think this is just an incredible village. Just so nice and so awesome to see how this, how far this place has come. Um, as uh, Pendraken has been uh, leading the project and building into what it is right now. Um, wow, I haven't actually seen this pond down here, but uh, yeah, great, great work. 
Another thing that you guys might be interested in seeing is this is Tarago's great tree. He actually has a picture of his plans, which I absolutely think is, uh, whoo, that's gonna be a lot of work. But uh, he has great plans for this and he's been very inspired and might I add, going to take a lot of oak logs, a lot, <laughs> a lot of oak logs. So I am uh, hoping that this will turn out as he expects it to and um, it's just, he's an incredible uh, artist so he has a great um, eye for balance and detail so I know he's gonna do it. I mean I've seen like Vaughn building a mountain um, so <laughs> if Vaughn can build a mountain I guarantee you Tarago can build a tree but it's going to be absolutely incredible to see the progress of this as it develops um, but it's going to have like a massive like glowing fruit at the top big uh, what do you call it, canopy of dark oak leaves, and just, I'm prob probably gonna have some sort of uh, structure in it as well. Uh, I'm not quite sure on that, but uh, yeah, super excited to see how this develops. And another build here, not actually that far from Tarago's tree, actually just a little bit southwest from there, is a star fort being built by Tigerbred, who is also a Duconian. Um, really, really cool design here. And it's not actually, like I was expecting when he was going to say, I'm making a star fort, I was thinking he was going to make this massive, enormous thing. But this is actually a very reasonable size, and I'm very happy about that because, oh my gosh, a big star fort would take forever. But look how symmetrical it is. Like he actually did a really good job in doing all the diagonals and the uh, the arrows. Um, what do you call those? The pinnacles? I don't know what they're called. But anyways, just a really great design. You got the uh, star fort. Uh, you know, the, the size, very well done. And then you got, of course, I'm not even sure what you would call the inner uh, part of a star fort, but um, like the fort of a star fort, I don't know. Anyways, um, really cool, really excited to see how this develops and as he continues to see what it turns into. But uh, yeah, man, Tiger Bread, this is the first time I've actually seen this and I am very impressed. Okay, guys, so the last thing to show is uh, our second most recent uh, addition to the server, Mr. False, is making a underwater-themed uh, town slash village, I don't know, uh, palace, maybe, by um, inspired by Aquaman. So he's making it underwater, and I'm really interested to seeing what he does with this. But you got uh, the inside is, of course, um, void of water. Uh, but you go outside and it's, uh, well, obviously all water. So it's really interesting to see uh, the development of this and um, really interesting concept. Obviously, this 1.13 is the underwater update. So it's really interesting and I hope to see some really cool things as he uh, continues to develop this. Um, but he has a little wall going all the way around and, of course, the, uh, the main palace there. So, yeah, really excited to see what happens. All right, so uh, to end this episode off, I will present to you some major progress here in Queensdale. Now, this is a really impromptu um, arrangement that you see before you. This was just like randomly, Duconians just came on in force and were like, yo, let's build some stuff. And so next thing you know, this next next district um, just outside the moon gate is under construction. So now, Fairskin's house is not the only one here. You have Aquotis in his house, and then you have Mesophila and her inn. Um, now, she does have an inn outside the gate on the other side of the town as well. But, uh, man, this one is looking beautiful. But uh, I am really liking Aquotis' house here. This is a really fantastic design. I feel like I say that for everything, but it really is. So now we're gonna make our way up this way. Um, actually, there is this over here as well. Um, Caligath has made some progress on his house out here um, just as well. And I think that looks absolutely beautiful so far. Looking forward to seeing progress on that. But also another thing is Mesophila has actually been doing interior for her place. Unlike the others who uh, build their houses and then are not so inspired for the interiors. But uh, Mesophila is really doing a good job with uh, adding in plenty of... <laughs> Plenty of uh, interior here. We got a creepy back alley here, so that's really cool. But uh, actually, I'm cu I'm curious. Is the upstairs? Um, no, it is not. And how am I supposed to even get up here? Ah, there we go. Let's close those really quick. But yeah, as you can see, 
There is a lot planned for up here. She's going to be adding in little rooms all over the place for those that would want to have a place to stay while they visit Queensdale on their journeys. Um, so there is that really nice little inn here. Love it to bits. Now, if we head up around this away, it'll take us over the canal uh, that leads this way, and its water source comes from the uh, the bathhouse. But uh, as you can see, we got a lot of like fortified structure type deals going on here. Uh, got some kind of house there. And then uh, we head over into a small gate. And as you can see on this side, um, got some houses. This is sort of like, uh, as I had said in the beginning of, of the video, a uh, bit of a bailey at the foundation of the castle here. So it's really, really cool to see this uh, developing so quickly and so well. Um, really like that tower up there. I wonder, is there even a way to get up to the top quite yet? I don't see any doors down below, but maybe it's along the wall here. Let me just check really quick. Ah, there we go. Um, let's get all the way to the top here. I don't suppose that this is going to be the finished design for the stairs, but uh, yeah, here we got a nice little view up here where guards can um, find little... Uh, pesky thieves and shoot down them or something. I don't know. Anyways, that's what a guard tower is for. But uh, anyways, works out very nicely. Love it to bits. So um, I do expect that by the next episode, there should be a lot more progress here in Queensdale. And uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the episode overall. There has been so much progress on the Conquest of Vanilla server. Um, people have been working hard to produce their builds and just create an incredible environment that we can enjoy in the survival gameplay and the atmosphere is coming along so nicely so um yeah like i said i hope you all enjoyed this episode maybe you found some inspiration in it and uh yeah if you're interested in joining um there is limited uh positions open uh but we will be figuring out a more streamlined system uh, but go ahead and DM me on Discord, and then maybe I can give you further details. But do not be disappointed if I uh, do not immediately respond, um, as they're, they're, I'm already sorting through um, possible applications uh, even now. So there is a lot of uh, future uh, people that might be coming to join us and adding to this wonderful community. By the way, the Duconians are closed, so we won't be accepting anyone else, but the other factions of the server uh, will be uh, accepting some new members, so just keep that in mind. But uh, anyways, hope you all enjoyed this episode. It was a great server tour. Uh, there was a lot to show, and uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. Hope you guys did as well. I will see you on the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, till next time, uh, bye bye <laughs>